in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed they tell you you have all kinds of sicknesses that destroy you. But you find out his word is a compendium of his perspective about you. And so he tells you, by his stripes, I am healed. I have been healed. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, right, dwells in your mortal body, the Bible says that same spirit will revitalize. Now that's his opinion. You can be aware of it and still remain sick. Or... You can choose to subscribe to that new ideology and watch the word of God come to pass in your life. You see, God is alert, ensuring that all those who truly believe his word live with a testimony. It may take a while, brothers and sisters, but as surely as you correctly believe God, give him time. There must be a performance in your life. Say amen. I am amazed at how many believers think their lives will change just because they are born again. I am more amazed at the preachers that teach Christians every week that all it takes to triumphant success in the kingdom is just to surrender your heart to the Lord and go to bed. That looks very spiritual. It is very evangelical. But it's not the accurate presentation of God's thoughts as far as our success is concerned. Something in that equation is missing. And this is why people get born again. And they say, I'm born again. I'm a believer. Why are things not changing in my life? Everything I used to suffer before, I'm still suffering them after. And I'll tell you why. Because you see, you receive salvation through faith, an act of God's grace. But there is a partnership with you to activate the realities. The Bible says that we draw out of the wells of salvation. Everybody say wells not just one salvation as a package is broken down into different systems of possibilities your finances your health your life the operation of the spirit in your life your spiritual growth it is now left for you through the ministry of the holy spirit to work with the word of god and change your mindset please hear me i am I am a firm believer that a believer who has refused renewal will experience the exact same thing with an unbeliever. The only difference is the security of his eternal salvation. But as far as the earth is concerned, there will be no, absolutely no difference as far as kingdom exploit is concerned. Are we together? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3. And he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then Jesus responds to Nicodemus in verse 3 of John 3. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you. He said, except a man be born again. He said, he shall not, he cannot see the kingdom. He uses the word see the kingdom. Are we together? Verse 3. Verse 4. Nicodemus responds and says, ah, How can a man now be born again when he is old? 
will he enter a second time into his mother's womb then jesus explains his concept verse 5 he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born of water and the spirit then he switches terminologies he said he shall not enter it's one thing to see the kingdom but it's another thing to enter the experience of the kingdom i call it prophetic realities and experiential manifestations it is one thing to hold the prophetic word of god it is another thing to enter the experience of it between thus saith the lord and it came to pass is a process that process is your degree of alignment please listen to what i'm teaching you this will hold the key out of every life of pain and shame and mediocrity hallelujah do you believe what i'm sharing with you tonight i watch people very innocently well-meaning people live under the expectations of god and they are not doing anything about it some are waiting for god to do something about it so you hear people call and say man of god i don't know what is happening in my life i serve the lord i go to church but nothing is happening and the biggest area largely is the area of finances nothing is changing is god so wicked no he's not there are systems in the kingdom everybody says systems it is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles listen he gave unto some prophets he gave unto some evangelists and pastors and teachers why for the equipping maturing perfecting building up of the saints so that the saints will not keep misunderstanding him god wants to be understood there is something about the thinking of god that men do not understand and so he anointed certain people and said explain to people that i'm not the reason why their lives are that way there is an understanding they do not have listen he anointed some he didn't anoint them to be noise makers he didn't anoint them to be offering razors he didn't anoint them to just be jeep drivers he anointed them for the maturing if you are in the fivefold ministry and you're not contributing to demystifying the kingdom, you are wasting God's time on earth. The role of the fivefold ministry is to present the kingdom, make it clear, let the inhabitants, believers, understand. By the time they see the spiritual logic to God's system, they will now say, Ah, I see. It's not that God is wicked. I never knew that there is a system like this. I never knew that godliness with contentment is great gain. I never knew that my not tithing is what is authorizing the devourer. I have prayed. I never knew that as powerful as prayer is, it's not the only key to opening doors in the kingdom. So the fivefold ministry. By grace... It's not just about their spiritual life. There is an anointing that comes upon them and gives them an advantage. A superior working of the spirit in their life gives them uncommon understanding to the working knowledge of the kingdom. To the end that they will now call believers and say, guys, I found it. I think I've seen the reason why you are not anointed. Ah, uh, It's not just about prayer and fasting. Your motif. And then the person says, really? I, I came from a background that is not so good and um, I'm naturally inclined to wanting power and wanting a, a sense of self-worth. And you say, no, I've studied the kingdom and I found out that once your motive is to glorify yourself, you cannot have the anointing. Are you seeing now? The fivefold ministry, you have edified that person. So he goes back in prayer, scans his motive and say, Lord, I changed my eyes my mindset i change my understanding it's no longer about being a celebrity it's about seeing your kingdom come at once he satisfies the condition for the power of god that same person will have a dramatic encounter and go for a meeting and suddenly begin to see the power of god because someone adjusted his mindset what you are receiving and what you receive every week 
it's not just impartations it's not just encounters but you are receiving realignments the answers to your questions are being dispensed are we together now to the end that you will now find out why certain things may not be working in your life now it's up to you to be malleable enough and say lord i am the porter i'm the clay you are the porter mold me to whatever form you can argue and say no i don't agree with this and then continue suffering or you can say look i have i have found the truth and i will adjust i like i like um what's his name that short guy the tax collector zacchaeus when he climbed the tree he was a wicked man he defrauded people because of his office as a tax collector but his motive was sincere now he climbed the tree i know why he was a wicked man because of his size he probably felt that they were looking down on him and so he had to amass wealth to cover for something so the issue was not finances the issue was trying to cover for inferiority are we together and he climbed the tree to see jesus and jesus said don't climb it's your house i'm going to jesus meets the man and at once he corrects zacchaeus mentality he says i didn't come to your house because you are rich i didn't come to your house because you are tall in other words it's not about those things it's about my love and my grace you did not qualify but i came to your house and zacchaeus said that means there's no need defrauding people at once he changed his mindset are we together now he started returning everything and said ah, my amassing money was not because i like money i was hoping that through it i will look like royalty so that every celebrity will visit my house now jesus has abused my mentality and he says there's no need for that old thinking we must be like zacchaeus tonight opening up our hearts and the moment the word of god comes you don't argue with it you see only foolish people argue with the word of god especially when you are not getting results in your life we live in a generation where people are confident to talk about things they know nothing about are we together someone who doesn't play football you see him arguing for three hours he says i know how much i will pay them this amount meaning his team and he never contributed anything and he never wonders and say come why is my life not working like the person i'm talking about people argue all around why should doctors go on strike and the person is not even he's not near medicine he doesn't know anything we like talking boldly about things we know nothing about and that's the danger we keep venting our ignorance but when we come to god he requires that we become silent that's what mary did Martha was busy about commanding and talking and Jesus said Martha Martha you are worried and upset about many things you are trying to get things done but one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen to do what to sit at the feet there's something about being still in God's presence when he was about to feed the 5,000 he said let them sit down if you can't sit down there's no bread for you sitting down is a sign of stability he makes me lie down in green pastures oh but joshua selma you i have bills to pay tomorrow sit down in green pastures your running around is not the solution let me tell you something when we go through things we think god is disturbed the way we are disturbed and we say god keep responding on the go and god says i'm not going to talk to you prove you trust me by sitting down in five minutes that sickness you are trying to rush and call a doctor outside and god is saying just sit down I can address this issue you can't even raise 3.5 million to go to india so why don't you sit down and give me time and walk out of this meeting here i believe the word of god i believe the word of god i respect the word of god i will never argue with his perspectives i'm not too proud to admit i am wrong no 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 once the word of god challenges my ideologies i say lord i agree with you you cannot be wrong so i'm the one who is wrong here anyone who has that kind of spirit is on his way to an enviable destiny do you know how long it takes the average believer to adjust to the word of god until we exhaust all our options and we are convinced that there is no other way 
Then we say, okay, Lord, what were you even saying? And God says, I've been talking for five years. When will you listen to me? Okay, Lord, I admit I'm 35 now. And there's no husband. Oh, yeah, let me hear what you have to say. And God, he says, sit down. It's not by hopping up and down. There is a secret. You settle down for six months and enter your marital life. You would have entered it five years ago if you paid attention. The day you listen to God, that becomes your this day. Your this day can be any day. He says, there remained a rest for the people of God. He said, today, if you will hear his voice. Let me tell you something. Time never changes anything. Time only reveals. The day you align to the word of God, that's the day your change starts. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, you are about to speak to me. I'm not rebellious. My heart is open. Go ahead and pray inside and outside. The online community, open your heart and let's pray. Shiba Kato Saba. Shiba Kurato Sapre Teketi Baladaba. Mambros Kalabri de Shikrea Suparato Sabrati Alabadadi. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Sing it one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. Aside from my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the privilege that God has given me to understand and know the person of the Holy Spirit. The next, I would say, biggest gift that God has given me is an understanding of the systems of the kingdom. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom. How the kingdom works. The grace for performance that is on the strength of knowledge. Not just jacking yourself and say it will happen and mocking yourself. Understanding that produces consistent results. And there are so many of them. We've shared a lot of them in this house. But in this series, I took six of them. Six irrefutable laws of the kingdom. That when you walk with, please hear me. When you walk and live by these truths. When you allow the word of God to superimpose your thinking. And it becomes your conviction. And you are diligent to act. I promise you there will be a performance. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day, not choose the ones you like, to do and observe, keep, live by all these laws that I give unto you, right it says that you shall be exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you then he begins to tell you you will be blessed in the city you will be blessed in the country and all of that all those blessings but they are tied to your obedience they are tied to faith they are tied to your response which is a product of your conviction when you don't believe a thing you cannot live by it you cannot act upon it so we took some laws the first was the law of encounter and we spoke about complete surrender that was the first discussion that complete surrender is the law that governs the manifestation of the hand of God upon a man that every time you see a man a woman 
a man of God walking in unusual strange dimensions of graces the issue is not criticizing them the issue is not joining all those band of noisemakers calling everybody around town fake there are people who have this understanding the moment they see things they do not understand they see certain superior levels of graces they begin to criticize it once it is outside of their frame of belief how can a woman 35 years barren be pregnant you see that and they come up with you would you would think such a great testimony like this will be received by everybody until you discuss it among critics you say where is the woman bring her let's see her and the baby and let's have a doctor certify that it was 35 years as if the man forgot when he married his wife you see how people think so every time people see unusual levels of grace they usually will try to find explanations to discredit that is not as powerful as that but the key is complete surrender never forget this forget about great levels of the anointing when you are still conscious of yourself your reputation your anointing your sermon the quality of your revelations you will never touch the anointing that way are we together god will only truly anoint men who become reflectors men who have paid the price to be his image bearers they are reflectors of him not themselves a man of God who wants power to build a ministry and prove to people he's anointed will keep sweeping empty grounds and, 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 and keep preaching to empty pews for the rest of his life. Because God is not interested in men making a name for themselves. The name they make is his reward by uh, his reward for them being reflectors of him. Hallelujah. I have seen a lot of preachers come to me and every time they come their first question is what is the secret to the anointing and they think it's just some magic formula i'll say this and that and that eat bitter leaf for one week add cabbage after that pray just put cross on your head for three days and get into power that's charm that's that's not the way it works it's not a charm you put in your pocket and then you just hide it in your suit no those who use that know what they are doing but those who you see true power in the kingdom is a product of relationship it's a product of relationship you cannot receive from a god you do not know you can receive from a herbalist you do not know you can receive from a native doctor you do not know you don't even have to know them but if you want to receive from god the first assignment is not your hand it's your heart my son give me your heart so we discuss that complete surrender as the key to unusual grace. Number two was the revelation that realities are only our physical reality is a reflection of a reality greater. Listen to this. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, his mind, so he is. I told you this law. It is the law that births realities in our world. That your physical life is only a looking glass are we together the quality of your life spiritually and otherwise is a reflection of something happening inside your life is not authorized to change until your mind changes anything that is not a reality in your mind cannot be a reality in your life Genesis 11 God came and saw Nimrod the son of Cush mobilized certain people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the bible says they burnt mortar and slime and bricks and started building and then the bible says god came to look down and see the building which the son of man had built god said as far as he was concerned they had finished the building because they had conceived it as a possibility right here your life will never change until your mind changes let me tell you the danger of trying to change things physically without changing it in your mind if one million naira enters your hand and there is a poverty mentality in you that mentality will adjust your behavior to force that money to leave you and until it leaves you and you become poor then your mind will interpret it as you being normal your mind will interpret wealth as being abnormal because it's not consistent with your beliefs 
Are we together? Yeah. So you must make sure that transformation happens first within. You don't change people by just trying to change their physical environment. I gave an illustration one time when I was speaking about transformation. Have you dashed somebody a shirt or a trouser that you used for three years? It's still looking brand new because your mindset made you care for it. You always ironed it. You dash the person in the clothes and in two weeks a shirt that was white has become brown. The person's mind is showing on the shirt. Are we together now? Yes. You give that person a shirt. Or, ordinarily, you wear it for two days and wash it or one day and wash it. But this guy has worn it for two weeks. Why? Because in his mindset, he says it is not necessary. Neatness is unnecessary. It's only... Um, an emergency and once I am not sick there is no reason why I should be neat that's what his mindset is telling him so he wears the shirt for two weeks until everything tears and then he throws it away if the shirt has love written on it you see that the O has faded or disappeared two weeks it's the same thing that will happen to a corporation when you take the security man and make him the MD and make the MD a security man. You know, most people see wealthy people, for instance, and say, how can we be walking? We are the ones sweeping, opening gates. There is a wicked man sitting under AC, just signing papers, and his salary is 10 million, and we are here receiving 15,000. No, it's not the suit, it's not the AC, it's the mindset. If you want to know, switch them. Take the security man and keep him on that seat. Let me tell you what he will do. We've discussed it, right? He will steal stabilizers. He will drink what is in the fridge because his mindset does not teach him that he has capacity to reproduce it. Careful. Hallelujah. That's all right. Let me have your attention. Please. So with that kind of thinking, look up please. With that kind of thinking and that kind of faulty understanding, what happens to the person? You know, so it has to be in your life as it is in your mind people try to change their physical environment we use all kinds of things to change our mindsets so somebody can wear a suit and feel like a ceo but there's there's nothing ceo there you see so there's nothing to deliver you can carry complimentary cards and move around and they say who are you, you say my name is this and that i am the ceo what is your value i don't understand what you're saying because for you to be a CEO, there's something you should have got to. You ignored it and thought it was all suits. How we fool ourselves. We hate adjusting our minds. But we love trying to fake it in the physical. And Nigerians can fake things. We can fake wealth. You can fake as... You, people act as if they eat fried chicken and, and this every time. Whereas in their mindset, they are living in abject poverty and they will not make adjustment and sometimes pastors in a bit to encourage people this is what we tell people act like your future and what what i understand what we mean we mean change your mindset but someone now says okay i'm hearing act like your future and hot son the person wears suit and tie and is moving say i am a ceo he carries a bag and he thinks I'm acting like my future and he mocks himself for 10 years. Whereas the first way to act like your future is to think like your future. You must think like your future to become like the future. So the issue is not going to borrow money and now start buying shoes of 10,000 and 15,000 when you cannot afford food of 200 naira. The idea is not to create a fake outer environment. The idea is to begin to give your mindset new information. And inevitably, trust me, trust me people, I know what I'm telling you. Inevitably, your physical environment will become a reflection of your mindset. Our physical environment is only a mirror. Have you seen someone stand before a mirror? Assuming I stand before a mirror and maybe there's something um, on my head or on my shoulder and I'm trying to remove it. Will I put my hand inside the mirror to change it? I adjust it here and the man in the mirror adjusts. The man in the mirror is this physical you. The real you 
is the person within. If that adjustment does not happen, forget about trying to create change. That's why people create temporal changes and then their mindset superimpose it. Are we together? So I try to act as if I'm a Christian. I'm not serious about God and I'm not serious about the world. But simply because I want to enter a relationship with a lady who comes for koinonia and she has told me if I don't come for koinonia, no relationship. I come and I fake it. Are we together? While they are singing, I watch people raise their hands. I'm not raising it out of conviction. I don't even know what is happening. And after five minutes, I say, my dear, I'm leaving this place because my reality tells me you are supposed to be drinking by eight o'clock. You don't worship God by eight o'clock. And you have programmed your mind to always drink by evening. While worship is going, you are just remembering that somebody can buy it free. I don't have money, but somebody will buy the beer free. But you are in church just by force. It's the same thing pastors try to do to people. Be nice. Don't be bad. Why are you a bad girl? Change. If she could change, she would not be that way. There is an understanding. The key is not to tell people to change. The key is to show them how to change. Hallelujah. As it is within you, so will it be in your life. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence he says for out of it are the issues of life guard your heart don't allow any kind of thing enter your mind let me tell you why many of us are confused we are confused because the informations we allow into our spirits are not constructive you finish listening to a worship song right now two hours of strong worship are we together the moment you finish you have the selection you have gospel songs you have uh, all, all the others, you know, songs like that, well selected. So when you want to feel spiritual, you finish listening to the gospel songs and then you announce a kite, enough of church, I beg. Let me just hype myself and enjoy. And now you put another thing. You are, you are diluting what you spend time you finish listening to the word of God and all of a sudden you just put a pornographic movie and you are watching and you are happy and you are laughing. At the end of it, you prayed for two hours but right now, you don't even know what your mind is thinking again. You, 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 the goal was for your mind to think creatively but all through your mind is thinking about something you are trying to fight because you are feeding it. Are we together? You are feeding it. You go and sit down in the midst of people who are always gossiping. You sit from 10 o'clock till 2, talking about people, tearing down people. And afterwards, you go back and you are surprised that that is your entire thinking. You have to protect your heart. Build a wall around your heart. Don't allow just anything to find expression. No. No. There are things I will never be found associating with. Not be, I don't care whether they are good or bad, honestly. I am on a project. I am well aware of how much my life would have changed if I were more renewed than I am now. And I'm on a consistent project to renewing myself. I'm not ready to sabotage that effort through carelessness. Are we together now? Please be careful what you allow in your mind. You allow people keep talking to you. You sit down and talk about somebody who became a millionaire in four months and say, four months, millionaire, there are thieves in Nigeria. I saw one, he's my neighbor. Let me, I'm just waiting for that guy. And you sit down. Let me tell you what you are doing. You are associating wealth with negativism. Your mind cannot agree that you will be blessed because you have already castigated somebody and you have put a benchmark on yourself to never be wealthy. So somebody becomes a millionaire in four months instead of you to find out what kingdom principle did he did he practice what sacrifice what happened no we don't argue we say no way it took me 20 years your father will tell you or your mother will tell you to buy my first golf how can a young man become a millionaire in one month 20 years one uh, four months it took you 20 years because of what your knowledge could deliver that's how long it took you to be in the labor room 20 years are we together? There are different ways to get to Lagos. You can trek. You can ride a bike. Are we together? You can follow a luxurious bus. 
you can have your private car you can fly you can take a private charter you can have your own jet you will arrive in different conditions don't don't ever make a mistake that you will arrive with the same condition no that guy who trekked from when buhari won that gentleman they they appreciated him but have did you see the guy yes that's how life is with many people we use all kinds of formulas that we think will take us to the place of destiny and when we find people applying superior kingdom principles rather than finding out we add you and we say no this is the only way i know that means that's the only way there is tell somebody there is another way hallelujah say there is another way please give us first corinthians chapter 12 the last verse first corinthians 12 the last verse hallelujah hallelujah god is changing us first corinthians 12 the last verse please everybody read it says but covet earnestly the best gift uh-huh read on and yet i show unto you a more excellent way say there is a more excellent way the fact that you are doing it the way you know to do brothers and sisters hear me does not mean that is the only way you can do ministry the way you were taught in the seminary in bible school but that does not mean that is the ultimate way there is a more excellent way are we together you can manage your family the way you know you can try to know god the way you have been taught but there is a more excellent way and that's the way that the lord is teaching us that it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you it will always take partnership because the kingdom of god is made of systems and every system defines the operation of god in a particular way there is the administrative and governmental system of the kingdom there is the economic system of the kingdom are we together now there is the family system of the kingdom the area i was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and fortunately we are, we are studying the course ministry and while i was teaching them i taught them something i told them i said when the devil comes to your life he finds out which operation of the system you do not understand that becomes his entrance point in your life so if satan comes to your life and finds out that you are a prayerful person he will not start his attack that way he finds out that you don't have a problem fasting and praying and studying the word you have already understood the relevance yet you are not an excellent person he uses your lapse of lack of excellence as the access point to your life are we together now jesus said this satan cometh to me and does not find anything satan tried to access the life of jesus through different systems at first he tried to terminate him at birth it didn't happen he refrained himself waited for jesus when he was tired he now came trying to use hunger turn these stones into bread it didn't work he tried to use pride and ego are you not the son of god he shall put his angels charge over you even try to use spirituality jesus defeated him and the bible says he left him for a season watch this he now tried to come through peter are we together to prohibit jesus from talking about his death and resurrection jesus detected it and rebuked him finally he came through judas and he was allowed so that scriptures will be fulfilled not because jesus did not know the bible says after they took the communion satan entered judas and he went and caused made the arrangement for them to kill jesus christ the systems of the kingdom the area you do not know is the area the devil will defeat you in. and so i'm opening us up to the multifaceted dimensions of the systems of the kingdom to the end that we will be fortified not just spiritually not just financially not just maritally there will be complete and balanced growth number three i shared with us last week on how to receive direction and divine strategies there is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible 
for helping men surmount mountains in their lives and it's found in proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 7 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and there's a promise tied to it he said if you acknowledge him he shall direct your path right then you read verse 7 it says be not wise in your own understanding fear the lord and turn away from evil but the verse of emphasis is verse 6 in all thy ways acknowledge him and she shall direct your path that every time you are confused in your life which is normal for men we are human beings we do not have all the knowledge there are times you will be faced with mountains that are bigger than you listen to me please there are times you will be faced with all kinds of mountains financial mountains marital mountains educational mountains career mountains spiritual mountains health mountains there are all kinds of mountains before you and jesus is teaching us how to surmount those mountains he says every time you get to a point where you are in a crossroad you are confused you don't know what to do he says forget about the object of your worry and begin to acknowledge him flaunt his majesty remind him of the things he has done before and he's authorized to create a pathway number four the law of mastery and competence this is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for producing greatness and rewards the kingdom operates on a reward system this is one of the fundamental laws of wealth one of the fundamental laws of relevance one of the fundamental laws of influence one of the fundamental laws of greatness the law of competence proverbs 18 16 it says the gift of a man i told you to write many things as similes of that word gift the value of a man the contributions of a man are we together the abilities of a man when well refined developed and deployed will make room for him will make room for him regardless of your background koinonia regardless of what you know and what you do not know when you find your giftings the abilities that god deposited in you and you pay the price to refine them they will bring you all kinds of rewards tangible rewards what are tangible rewards money and all the physical privileges that come and intangible rewards the sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that comes knowing that you are revealing the glory of god and that you are using your gifts to serve humanity it brings fulfillment but it happens only at the mercy of competence i'm building tonight right here when a man finds his god-given ability koinonia please listen to me i plead with you in the name of the lord jesus christ pay attention when a man finds his god-given ability he has found his way out of mediocrity he has found his way out of failure he has found his way out of pain and tears but your gift in itself although it came from god it always comes as a seed it always comes unrefined listen to me it will take that gift passing through a process of refining of development are we together now and of of mastery in dispensing it to be paid for and to be received and rewarded for nobody is going to bless you just because you think you have been having dreams that god is calling you to be a chef or to be a caterer have you mastered the cooking to an extent that a governor can call you or call your catering company this is the area i have problems with men of god because we never challenge people to be at their best they just bring little prophets offering for us and we prophesy and we lie to them because we know that their gifts the way it is someone comes to meet you and says i want to have a, a construction company how many years experience do you have nothing do you have a very credible engineer no you are the one who is the ceo of the company what did you study you studied 
fashion how does fashion relate with building stadiums and building bridges you are an entrepreneur do you have the required engineers no but he's my tribe man and they now bring one million for the man of god and the man of god said go it is done i told you last week it's not done don't let anybody fool you like that favor is when preparedness meets opportunity favor hear me is when preparedness meets opportunity you want a job but please and please before i prophesy to you have you done your homework are we together now you are trusting god for a job somewhere before i speak to you have you learned people's skills have you mastered your art do you know your onions can you deliver competently don't come and ask me to prophesy into your life when you cannot you have not done your homework it's a mockery on god so god gives you an opportunity you have not mastered your cooking and they now tell you cook for 300 people the name of your company is goodness catering services that it has a spiritual name has nothing to do with the fact that good results will be delivered you now cook food for the 300 people and you make the person who recommended you to look stupid he did something to you as a favor because you are his church member but on your part you could not deliver before you start crying for favor make sure you have something in your hand well enough to deliver father give me a good husband have you mastered the art of being a good wife when was the last book you read and when was the last time you read it are we together oh god give me children what have you studied about parenting or you are just concentrating on trying to make sure your wife takes in have you studied on parenting you see many times let me tell you something get my teaching activating seasons of favor the lord taught me never to pray necessarily for opportunities because time and chance opportunities and seasons happen to them all one day like the hand of a clock your turn will come it must come but the key is to prepare so that the day you enter the presence of greatness you will never have to return again say amen competence i like you to say after me in the name of jesus i am gifted oh come on coin on your chorus it in the name of jesus i am gifted i am anointed the ability of the spirit is at work in me and i cooperate with god by refining those gifts knowing this that a day of favor must come to me and i do not want to abuse that day one day in the life of any man listen one day in the life of any man you will be seated before your destiny helpers it's up to you to deliver to the latter are we together i dread any time in my life when i will stand in the presence of greatness and would not have built capacity that is sufficient enough to open for me a door i dread the time when koinonia will be hundred thousand members and yet i do not have the leadership capacity to manage those crowds do you think god will give you there are certain people god pegs them at a level because that's the only level that will make them relevant and yet spiritual anything outside that is beyond their ability to manage there are people who can only manage anything less than one million they have not trained their minds and their lives to be able to manage those kinds of resources god will not give you 100 million if you saw it in a dream wake up it's a dream it is your capacity that will make it happen in your life i daniel understood by books you must buy the truth and sell it not refine your gifts refine your gifts refine your gifts write it down refine your gifts don't just identify them refine them they are the keys they are your bailout they are your bailout 
the concept of something for nothing is wickedness hello koinonia listen to me the concept of something for nothing is wickedness everybody rises according to their contribution our rewards in life will always be in direct measure to our contribution to want to become a millionaire giving the contributions of a pauper is wickedness that's why thieves are called thieves that's why we arrest them when we find them why because they use guns they don't contribute anything yet they want your money are we together so they bully you they say your money or your life bill gates is the way he is today because we can see his contribution you know why we insult politicians and we call them wicked they get their money by corruption we cannot see the value commensurate to what they have we see a man who is a local government chairman we do not see any developmental strides we don't see any entrepreneurial acumen yet we see billions in his account we know that that is questionable this is the basis upon which people are accused you don't accuse a man when you can see the value he's providing if i can provide the value of a billionaire you should not have a problem with billions in my account are we together now yes the question i want to ask you is that seat of greatness you want present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there nothing for many of us are we seeing now a woman once asked me to pray for her i think she owned a school and she said things were not working the students were leaving and she said a prophet came around to pray he fed son he prayed and told her there's something somebody in another school one other mama that had his neighboring school that she came and buried a charm in in the the madam's own school so that she would not prosper when the woman told me that thing i said madam i minister deliverance to people but i can tell you this is nonsense that prophet that uh, the, the 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 prophet man i may not call him fake but i know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps it's in the bible he said we are not like wizards right that peep they peep into the realm of the spirit there is no accurate knowledge they summon strange spirits to deliver informations for them which can be aberrated so he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well why should i send my child to her school your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence you don't know that colors are communicators <laughs> check shirt check check short knicker that's a school uniform for instance and then you put red or blue socks carelessly done with one tailor who is not competent but is a brother to the principal and so you allow the person to sew anything you see someone very tall and his 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 his, his, his trouser is, is just at around his lap no excellence what of the teachers the teach i'm not i'm not being insulted but the teachers themselves look at the result of the person teaching them accounting f9 in accounting f9 in maths f9 in economics f9 in commerce he's the chief he's even the head of department of maybe social sciences why because they attend the same church i'm telling you why people fail there is a place for the spiritual but never think incompetence will be substituted for um, our competence will be substituted for for prayer now it is that kind of school you finish everything the name is not good there is no intelligent pta uh, uh, parents teacher forum they are always fighting you are increasing the school fees every term every session but there is no commensurate development you write yx 60 people write junior yx only five have up to five credits the students are not so dull the teachers don't understand what they are doing it is that kind of school you write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say lord that school must change and every time you pray god tells you go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city usually those kinds of people they fight those who are doing well 
because they think they are colleagues we all have schools what is what is the name of your own you are not delivering let me tell you what keeps people incompetent don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing that that means you are colleagues are we together yes there are men of god i see i know i honor them with my life i know that we are all men of god but i know there are levels and there are standards i will not sit down and say oh this no 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 everybody is clapping for joshua selman the same way they are clapping for me i'm clapping for others too are we together now but this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent you have a supermarket it brings you one million per day you have a small kiosk it brings you maybe fifteen thousand per day you now sit down together we are all wearing suits we are colleagues are you doing the same thing no are you getting the same result no but in our arrogance we say we the entrepreneurs this guy has a kiosk this guy has a shopping mall but that humility to learn there is a saying in house that the person who can ask for road will never get missing the the keys to make us competent are there it just takes meekness but many of us are too embarrassed to improve we are too ashamed to seek knowledge especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us less privileged than us so we don't submit ourselves to listen i've been in ministry for 10 years it's not working but you say we are still meaning we are part of pfn we are part of Khan. a young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things i said forget about all those small children he's young that's why he's attracting his age mates have your age mates died why don't you attract them excuses that are reflectors of our our lack of desire to move forward I made up my mind it's a vow i have made with destiny that in every area where the lord wants me to excel i will master it and i will lead the field in the name of jesus christ if you are a preacher here i'm speaking to you don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying joshua selman you are the lion of the tribe of judah they are destroying you thank god for their applause but go back and say it's time to walk be committed to personal development you are a businessman you hit your first million you don't cross your leg and say my soul find rest no you say the journey is just about to start thank god for all those things but i need to learn who needs to mentor me who needs to build me champions are champions because they keep moving mediocre are mediocre because they stop moving give yourself to continuous improvement continuous development Number five. The fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. May God bring a helper to your life. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. Please media help us. Mark 2 1 to 5. I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions giants in the kingdom will you open up the gates hey, open up the doors will you open up the gates Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens, verse 3. And they came unto him. You, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers? It just says they, certain men, a certain man, never mentions their names. 
but mentions what they did. Let me tell you something. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. He says, bringing one who was sick of palsy, which was born of four. That means four people carried him. Four destiny helpers carrying a man. He says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, what did they do? They uncovered the roof where he was, Jesus now. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. When you read on, he was eventually healed. Watch this. Write this down. Destiny helpers are people who have been anointed, assigned, and commissioned to bless you and to take you to the next level. Of your destiny anointed assigned by God commission when Elijah was about to die of hunger in Brook Cherry the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said go to a city called Zarephath he said dear I have commanded a widow the widow never act, she never acted like she was commanded but God told the prophet I have commanded I have compelled her spirit to respond to you listen no matter how hard working you are no matter how competent you are in the dealings of God with men a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you please come Shadrach Shadrach is right at this level everybody please see watch this call this a level in life I am up here standing his desire is to come up here now he has done well he's played his part well suited but he has the gift the grace the anointing but no access are we together now he needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers listen to me the assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life please i want you to listen because some of us are at this level right now the truth is you have refined your gift the truth is you are competent but you are saying lord where is that man where is that woman who must speak there are three kinds of destiny helpers please write this quickly Three kinds of destiny helpers. Sorry, Shadrach, you have to stand. Okay, go ahead. Just, just write. Number one. The first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Divine connectors. Second Kings chapter 5. Divine connectors. Please give us from verse 1 to 5. Second Kings 5 from verse 1 to 5. Learn this. What I'm teaching you is not basic at all. It's not simple at all. It's a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants. The first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Who are they? Let me tell you who they are. They are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you. But they, can, they have access. They can point you to those who can lift you. They do not have the anointing to heal you. But they can take you to a church where you will be healed. They do not have money to give you, but they can take you to somebody who can help you. They are called divine connectors. Their assignment is to connect you. They don't have the power in themselves to help you. Are we together? But they have access to an information that you need. Here is a situation. A great man called Naaman, the Bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of Syria. Listen. He says he was a great man with his master. An honorable man. Because by him, the Lord had given deliverance to Syria. He says he was also a mighty man in valor. But there was an area in his life lacking. He was blessed spiritually. Blessed maritally. But financially, something was still hanging. Are we together? He had excelled in every area, 
but certain areas were still hanging and a miracle is about to happen to him verse 2 and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought listen away captive out of the land of Israel who a little maid you see no name again no name take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector it says a little maid and she waited upon Naaman's wife she was a PA to the big man's wife one day something happened next verse she said unto her mistress would God my Lord with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that's a destiny connector the little girl said I know I'm a, I'm a captive but while I was in Israel there is a man I know that that man is powerful I pray that my being little will not make you to not listen if you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet I know he will be healed these are destiny connectors Sam I know you have this talent but I was browsing and I saw that there is an international music auditioning I'm not a musician but I thought the information may be important for you certain men destiny connectors are we together now this lady had no power to heal the man but she knew a prophet Kai, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored there is someone who knows who will bless you but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you let's run through this very quickly and one went in and told his lord saying thus and thus said the maid that is in the land there of verse 5 and the king of syria said go to go and i will send a letter so on and so forth and all of that and when you read down to verse 10 naaman on account of in fact no 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 let, let's go to verse let's go to verse 8 can we go to verse 8 there's something i want to point out there listen and it was so when elisha the man of god heard that the king of israel had rent his clothes because the king was afraid right and then elisha said let him come now and see whether and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel read on and so on and so forth elisha came go to verse 12 listen look at this he had told him to go and bath in the river of jordan now historically speaking jordan at the time this man was given an instruction was not clean very dirty are we together so the man felt at my status to go and bath watch this he says are not all of these rivers you know better and all of that so he returned and went away in rage this is where i'm trying to go he was at the point of his breakthrough but in anger he was about to miss his miracle the destiny helper comes again and this and his servants came near and spake to him listen and said my father if the prophet had paid thee to do something worse will you not do it somebody came and spoke to him are we together again and said no no let me encourage you and that man went to bath when you read 14 and 15 he bathed seven times and his skin the bible records was like that of a child that of a baby destiny connectors i pray for you in the name of jesus christ that god will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary but they carry extraordinary things are we together now they may be your younger ones they may be children they may not have the ability to bless you but i pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you in the name of jesus christ the second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence the second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence mark chapter 15 verse 43 please give it to us very fast let's let's be fast about it mark 15 verse 43 it says joseph of arimathea this was jesus christ now right we, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting i'm reiterating it for so that we can believe josh um, joseph of arimathea an honorable counselor the bible says 
which also waited for the kingdom of God came and used his honor or influence he went boldly before Pilate and craved for the body of Jesus listen there are men in your life who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men you need them a time must come in your life where you will need them are we together do you know that please come assuming this lady is looking for a job are we together? this lady is looking for a job she's tried and tried but the privilege God has given me to lead this ministry we have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of God in my life and I appreciate it I can use my influence are we together and meet somebody someone like our daddy prof and say daddy please there is a lady here honestly she can be good for a secretary I endorse this lady I know that this lady is good daddy please do you have any friend that can give her a job do you know he may not have planned blessing her but because my influence is a middleman between two of them he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation and this girl will get a job are we together God bless you there are men of influence those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence let me tell you what they are telling you remain where you are forever because it will take a Joseph of Arimathea to speak to the king for you men of influence men of influence I've shared the story here in Koinonia true story that a, a guy who wanted to go to NDA but there was a height level that he needed to, to, to get to and he was short of it maybe by a few inches and they were about to deny him that opportunity and somebody who had connection to the Emir of Zazel here the Emir of, 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 of Zari and all of that um, came and met the gentleman and they wrote a letter no he didn't even write a letter he said they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir of zazel has added his height come on now that's called influence if the commandant does not act he knows what that means <laughs> to his daily bread to his career are we together look let me tell you influence is a force that moves men to their destiny don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people. I pray for them in my life. I want them in my life. I desire them in my life. One of the priceless things I learned about my father. My father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere. If it's police station, my father knows somebody in the police station. Prisons, my father knows someone. If your car breaks down, no matter the brand, there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows. It's an attribute in his life I covet earnestly. Are we together? Who do you know, brothers and sisters, that can bail you out of this wicked Nigeria? You can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you. May God raise a man of influence to call him and say, if you touch my pastor, I touch your job. Influence. You need influence in this life. You see, the people in the world are smarter than believers we sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves you need influence bishop oyedeko is great today i know he's great as an anointed man but it's not just because he's an anointed man he's a pastor of influential people are we together if the managers of five banks are members of your church are we together your chief financial secretary is the is the is the ceo of zenith bank will you be poor as a church please answer me will you be poor as a church don't say it does not matter keep fooling yourself it matters big time in this country we live in you need men of influence many of our parents ignore them that's why they are suffering may god make you a destiny helper to someone that one letter from you to say no no i know this person in the name of jesus christ Amen. i want god to make me a man of influence i am very unapologetic about it 
I want God to connect me to politicians, to connect me to business people, to connect me to diplomats. I'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter. I'm just a righteous man. I have fortified myself. I will still be holy with them and I will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When the former president, I heard a very funny story. I will only say part of it. The former president uh, of Nigeria did something funny to one prominent um, will I call him father elder statesman in Nigeria he did something funny to him and um, within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we had you did so and so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified I'm not just this. Ah! May God make Koinonia a place of influence. Please answer that amen well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Men of influence. The key to strategic kingdom advancement is key influence. Not just evangelism. That you are surrounded by men that matter. So that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence. Uh -uh. Influence gives you a voice. The Bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength. It's, it's a fortification. You need men of influence around your life. There's too much wickedness. Who do you know in the army that God can use to speak for you? Who do you know in the military? Who do you know in the banking system? Who has God connected you with? In the area of medicine if someone is about to die do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to india you need men of influence say i need men of influence open your mouth and pray in one minute send them to my life send them in my life send them in my life Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know, they say when they post you NYSC, once they post you and nobody can walk it before once nyc starts there is no hope of you being redeployed so they told you in my presence i have seen people four months in nyc carried away not marriage not pregnancy somebody used his influence and said i need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area it was quietly done in ABU, you call it third list but there are many lists according to what influence can bring are we together there are people whose admission letters are printed overnight jam irrespective come on now cut off point nonsense a voice is the cut off point influence and God brings them if you do not have men of influence you will join the queue in life and the queue does not move that's the sad thing about the queue in life there are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move even when they have it they won't give you chance they will stay there till they die so the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible how many look at redeemed and living faith in every city in every place they have land do you know there are territories that antagonize christians they will not give you land but they had influence they spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land and they said please give my pastor land as an allergy as much as he wants that's what influence can do may God give you influence in the name of Jesus there are many churches in Zaria who want to buy large properties there are there are lands around but they may never give churches they may never give certain people because they say one somebody holds it no 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 no. you watch what will happen in the name of jesus with koinonia let me tell you everybody on earth is a tenant 
nobody has a right to bully anybody for land god will give us land that will shock you it will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say pick it will happen by the spirit i'm not one of those fearful people who will not move the earth is the lord but you see it's not just the voice of heaven from the voice of god from heaven god will connect you to somebody i have prayed for many unbelievers and i'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day i need their help i prayed for them if god gives them breakthrough tomorrow we we'll say please we need your influence to buy 10 hectares of land for koinonia and they will say let it be done if they refuse the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us influence our parents rejected men of influence now they are paying for everything just to give somebody admission in secondary school see how we fast and pray whereas one signature can answer that prayer i pray for you from the depth of my heart any man who needs to enter your life who has the influence you require may the god that i serve bring them into your life may the god that i serve bring them into your life please hear me every man on earth answers yes sir to someone are we together if they refuse to tell you go ahead find who they answer yes sir to and they will answer yes sir to you too he said for i am a man under authority i am under authority so there are others under my authority there is no man who is no matter how people make themselves gods don't be threatened by men's noise they only talk every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up when the lion shows up he doesn't say keep quiet they will be silent whoever has robbed your family of what is their due whoever has closed the door for you there are many of us your qualification can give you a job but the people endorsing you are like you so their words are not heard may god bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of jesus christ there's no nonsense like a dog that is closed it's a mirage someone can open that door i've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people i've had the privilege of meeting very influential people and i have seen the way doors open just like that i've seen doors open just like that i remember one time one of our chairman um the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general in the army i remember when he was a colonel sometime in lagos you know we are so close and every time from the airport he would send the military people with the car his car and then with military bikes nobody does any checking as soon as they are coming they just flash light and they salute them access because of influence who told you driver's license takes three months it is the general thing when my international passport expired the general himself he drove me sir with his car we went to passport office in abuja in kaduna i even did the first one in abuja so it was even complicated in 30 minutes how many minutes about 30 minutes or so they brought out my passport for me and i was ready to go the woman who did it the madam there last year i went to minister in nigerian immigration their fellowship their chapel when i went there there was a woman they had moved her there and quickly i made friends with her because my passport would expire again <laughs> keep laughing at me don't lend the wisdom in what i'm saying listen when you see men of influence don't resent them you resent them because pastors have taught you they are all unbelievers don't mind them mind them mind them just make sure their influence does not destroy you but please mind them don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that but the greatest key is to become an influence yourself when you become an influence you become a magnet to influential people oh that's why i love the anointing goodness 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 the anointing will bail you out 
it will make you an influence you will not just look for men of influence they will come to you the bible calls them gentiles it calls their kings he said they will come to the brightness of your rising the last kind of destiny helpers are faithful men faithful men men who will stay with you in the thick and thin 90% of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you. They come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent. You will hardly find people who love you for who you are. But in your life, there are men you will find who love you for who you are. They will stay with you. For time's sake, 1 first, first Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. Please, let's hurry up. 1 Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, yeah, na 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 na. Hallelujah. David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen, one of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you when things are not going well they leave you alone when you are lonely but there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men are we together faithful men he said a friend is made for adversity there are many of us when you go through bad things there's nobody to stand there with you when everything works well everybody comes but there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men. Verse 2. And everyone that was in distress, one that was in debt, everyone who was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became what? Captain over them in a cave. How do you submit to a man who is a failure? How do you submit to a ministry that does not have results? How do you remain loyal to a business that is not working? It's called faithfulness. There are such men. There are such men. We were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry. Not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened. And I said they are called faithful men. They are not called men of God. They are not called assistants. They are called faithful men. May God position them in your life. Yeah. How many great men in this country have fallen and they are left alone? There are some of us, when our parents were wealthy, there were all kinds of relatives. Now, right now, there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men. There are psychophants around in our world. But there are people called faithful men. The Bible says that he was captain over them and they were with him in a cave. 400 people in a cave. There was no hope. It's not like they were there hoping things would change. They were saying, if we die, let's die with you. God. If you are a leader here, please let me give you a secret. Every time you pray, don't just pray for gifted people. Pray for faithful men. A faithful man is better than a gifted man. A gifted rebel is not an asset. Hallelujah. Verse 3, and then we'll stop. And David went thence to the... Okay, let's just stop there. I'm not going to read. Let me give you the next verse to read. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. That will tell you the whole story all till... But, but then we are looking at something else. First Chronicles 12. 
let's read 1 to 3 then move to verse 38 first chronicles 12 1 to 3 then 38 let me show you something very powerful about these faithful men look at this he said now these are the men that came to david in Zig in ziklag i'm fast forwarding now he says while he kept himself close because of saul the son of kish he said they were among the mighty men what did he call them helpers of the war so they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight he trained them they remained there they had now become helpers of the war and it lists all of them go to verse 38 for time's sake read with me please everybody hallelujah mm. all these men of war that could keep rank do you know what that hold on that means when david told them you stand as a musician they remained as a musician because david said it absolute loyalty regardless of results are we together he says they came with what a perfect heart nobody was doing eye service they loved him genuinely they were willing to die for him genuinely he said to make david king their determination they said david you don't need to bribe us we we are alive to make sure the word of the lord in your life will come to pass do you know god can send this man with you everything in your life can nose dive and they will come and say jimmy if everyone will leave you i will be here for you whether your wife gets pregnant or not i am here for you how many pastors are hiding many things in their lives because if members know they will run away because they are selfish people but there is a grace i truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man watch the kinds of people you are attracting and don't be too quick to say these people are my friends we even say they are my right hand men a friend is made for adversity adversity separates people you will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the jews and crucify you tomorrow but this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a jimmy becomes that ceo with a perfect heart to make sure that abiodun gets to that place of destiny so even if they would die in the process no problem there are such men listen he said and all the rest also in israel were of one heart to make david king they threw away their own personal agenda and said david for as long as you are not king we will not rest do you have such people in your life who will take responsibility and say for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job i will not rest you can call and say Kai uncle you have tried don't worry god is faithful he said god is faithful i take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed and they will run left right and center while you are sleeping they are awake they are saying help my son when they captured reverend Ntia Ntia is in Akwaibo, Ibom Uyo. when they captured him Dr. Paul Enenche said he could not sleep because he's not just because he was his spiritual son he said no he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around called his spiritual parents Oyedepo, they called Adeboye called federal government people and called people and said you better look for those assassins and release Intia, Intia right now Dr. Paul Enenche went himself to a quiet bomb and went to prophesy on that soil and say i command that my son be released faithful man is it not enough to pray from your house when a man leaves his house to your own to help you it's no longer just friendship it's called faithfulness pray in one minute lord bring faithful men i'm tired of false people in my life take what i'm saying seriously i'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless faithful men faithful men even when they know what you have done they say it will never change my relationship with you pray there are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant there are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men it's a terrible thing to live your life building men 
to and then realizing that they are not faithful. Make sure you are praying. Lord, bring faithful men to my life. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time, he taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, he said, to whom shall we go? Don't you know we are sold out? To whom shall we go? He said, you alone have the word of life. And when they were crucifying Peter, theologically, historically, they kept Peter and were about to nail him. And Peter said, I have one request. I know I will die. But I'm, I'm not worthy to die in the same position with Jesus. Turn me upside down and let me die. Faithfulness unto death. I'd like you to pray. Especially those of us who are trusting God for marriage. By the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you. Because of figure 8, you are in trouble. By the time you have a woman who just likes you. Because you have money or you are working in shell, you are in trouble. Lift your voice and say, faithful men. Faithful men faithful men pray shabala kabara da bala da bala da bala da bala da bala da da bala da da bala da bala faithful men faithful men anointed to stay with your vision anointed to stay with your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many people who pray for me the prayer department prays for me my parents pray for me but there is a woman you have never seen the woman i met this woman in a meeting and the woman said she had a revelation when she listened to my message she said i have entered a covenant with god she said i'm an intercessor i've entered a covenant with god that until i go to heaven I am an intercessor for you and your ministry. God is, I've never given this woman one naira. God is my witness. You can ask the protocol and all those who follow me. They don't even know the woman. I have never given her one naira. Once in a while, she will just send me text and say, my son, just know your mother is praying for you. I tell you, there are times I'll be trusting God, all decisions and her text just comes. Faithful people. They will never ask for money. They will never ask and say, when you get there, it's chop by chop. They, they, they see it as a ministry to make sure you prosper. I've seen people like that. With all humility and by the grace of God, one of such people is our daddy here. I remember when um, there was a time that, you know, we're looking for the venue for ministry and all of that. Do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly there are still people here they they would ask about koinonia as if it's even their ministry it's like they are more concerned about it than me i sent a text to a few people telling them we're trusting god to buy land you know to, to to get land and all of that and one of the women sent and said i've been waiting for this she said i've been waiting for this make sure when it starts my contribution comes in she said i will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land faithful men a pastor may have nothing but faithful men and i tell you he has more than assets he may not be able to play the keyboard well but he's faithful he will die with you are we together there are people who were once in this ministry today they have left some of them are abroad they are the ones spreading koinonia messages around I don't know them but they take those messages all around it's an anointing that is upon this ministry faithfulness i tell you we don't force people to do anything here there is a grace i saw it in certain ministries i pursued it like a man pursues water when i found it i got it and i knew many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives you are not sure of anybody close to you they will laugh with you now 
and when they turn they can say crucify him let me tell you no matter how careful you are you cannot make men faithful by yourself it would take a heart under God for them to vow and say I love this man I am loyal to him to death there are people today they bring a gun to shoot they will stand and receive that shooting for me I know that not everybody but there are people you need that in your life because you are there facebooking people chatting with people and saying you are my best friend you are my best this they will leave you let me tell you something when the going gets tough because in every man's life there are valleys there are times of challenge how many wives left their husbands simply because for one year there was no money they packed their load and went how many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years she could not give them a child faithfulness is important don't think i'm joking when I, when we are saying this please i want you to pray again and say lord in my life send faithful men i told you they are anointed they are commissioned they are anointed they are commissioned they don't just come they are sent send faithful men send faithful men hallelujah number six please sit down we're rounding up the last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom this is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. There is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom. Listen, I'm establishing the law of honor. The law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing. Hear me. There is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom. Results do not just happen. There are graces that activate possibilities. There is a kind of grace that brings influence. There is a kind of grace that brings wealth. There is a kind of grace that brings freshness. Are we together now? So that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor. That there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results. How you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations. When a result becomes consistent, there is a law and a grace at work. Number two, human beings are god's reservoirs of spiritual anointings spiritual graces god keeps his anointings in men not in jars not in goya oil they can just be prophetic contacts but god's instruments god's instrument for hosting his anointing listen he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what look up did he say shall receive god's reward there is something called a prophet reward is the reward that goes with his office are we together it is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the god he serves and the office he represents and it does not just mean a man of god it's a law every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently regardless of opposing forces there is a grace making that i have seen people in my life they are not very wealthy but they never beg i don't know what kind of grace that is the moment supplies are about to finish, something else comes. They never have one billion, but they never lack. 
if they need to travel abroad someone pays for the visa i've seen these people very strange people they kneel down and say lord send help from zion and men are rushing they will not bring one billion they don't have 20 cars they may just have one or two cars but you will come to their house you will never beg for bread it's a grace are we together when you see a ministry exploding in membership there is a grace when you see people moving from one dimension to the other there is a grace you can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly most ladies may think brothers want in sisters yet you find 10 12 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that she can say no i'm in a relationship you say close that one and come to me I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes and you are wondering come my brother is it that is it that this lady is gold he says me too i don't know it's a grace are we together that lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same there are people when they ask you something you can't say no you you swear heaven and hell and say this is the last time i'll give anybody this this lantern they just knock and say edgemy please can you help me with it you stand up like a zombie and pick it there is a grace there is a grace I have seen this there is a grace that brings a healing anointing in a ministry it's not just by faith there are people who have these graces now listen to me please your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated i wish what i were saying were a lie i would have quietly apologized and just sat down but this is true it has changed my life it is changing my life it has changed this ministry it is changing this ministry the law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness the law of honor i used to think service was the cheapest route until i learned the law of honor my goodness you can quantum leap your destiny in one day you can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor. It has worked in my life like a charm. The Bible says, He that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what? A fruitful woman's reward. He that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward the keys that made him what he is listen you can men are dimensional that you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions there is joshua selman the human being there is joshua selman the friend there is joshua selman the man of god are we together there is joshua selman the businessman there is joshua selman the whatever it is there is a dimension you have not seen if you only know me as a man of god you receive that reward if i become your friend you will have access to certain things that people will not have are we together if you come to see me in the capacity of a man of god you can sit down i will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of God. But if you come as my friend, when a Jimmy comes to see me, whatever I'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating. He has he is not going to ask me. We will even talk about it. He wants more, he can open the fridge and carry it and we'll take. Are we together? Because we are friends. Are we together? But when we begin to talk, we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry. When I'm talking to my parents, we can crack jokes. But when I'm about to say something serious, I switch. Because I'm talking to men who brought me to this world. They have an anointing to speak over my life. Are we together? You can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes. But when I'm about to talk to him, I talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries. Are we together now? 
That's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones, we don't let them just join the queue, they sit down. These things are communications of honor. That's why we provide buses for you after the service. It's not just that we have money to throw around. No, it is to honor you. It's a law of honor. Because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing. And most of those anointings, we need it. And so we honor you to receive it. Are we together now? Yes. You want a car, you see somebody who has a car, you buy fuel. You are receiving him in the name of a car owner. You will get a car owner's reward. You see someone in a relationship, you don't keep gossiping about his relationship. You package a seed and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say, whatever made you get this good man, whatever made you get this good woman, you got this woman when you were not born again, meaning it was not your effort. This is grace. I need it. You sow into that life. You are walking. Someone is not walking. And you are saying, is it teacher that I'll sow into? You see? So you never rise. One day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes. And he gets up and says, ah, my roommate, what is this for? He said, I didn't iron it as roommate. I'm tired of joblessness. I'm tapping into the grace. That frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity. Out of the millions of jobless people, you got a job. How many barren people have honored those who have children? They will criticize them. Hallelujah. An anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life. An anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor. Maybe the reason why you are grounded. Hear me, I'm rounding up. You saw a prayer grace in Koinonia and you felt, please, these guys just pray too loud. They just shout like idiots. I like the excellence. I like the word, but the prayer. And so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away because you ignore that grace. It's called the spirit of prayer and supplication. You saw grace for an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it. That's why those who criticize great men never become great. You see why our parents are sincere, but the way they are, they criticize every preacher on TV. They criticize every actor. They criticize every government worker. When they watch news, everything is criticism. They insult everybody. Who have you insulted to your detriment? Whose anointing have you resented? Let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor. Number one, you must believe in God. Number two, you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing you must not just believe in the person you must believe in the office the operation of that anointing i i pray for you that you get this we're about to pray but you need to get this for in your presence there is life everlasting i will reverence you lord i will reverence you lord i will reverence you lord for in your presence there is life Everlasting, I will reverence you, Lord. Listen, I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces, not just in ministry. I have, I have, I have honored them with my life. I saw into different TV ministries. Because Koinonia will soon have their own TV ministry. I never open my mouth and criticize anybody's TV ministry. Because somebody is going to be watching our own soon. So I plant a seed of honor. Are we together now? Yeah. I sow into the lives of people's children. Because I'm planting a seed of honor for my own children. I don't want my children begging for school fees, begging for bread. So I take care of other people's children. That's why I don't kick children and throw them out here. I take care of them. Let me tell you something. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. 
whatsoever a man soweth without fail except for the mercy of God he will receive it we have criticized people you have not started ministry yet every man of God does not have rema for you you are in for a shock in for a big shock you have not started business yet you look and say Kai this guy is talking 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 it's as if it's by luck if he built this company continue talking no reverence for people's sacrifices let me tell you something behind every glory there is a story if you do not respect the story and the glory you will never replicate it in your life never ever never ever there are people by the grace of god who i have never met eyeball to eyeball i've heard about them they have reproduced the grace upon my life for batting every anointing you see is yours for the taking but the key is honor honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands let me tell you something honor is not kneeling down lifting your hands you have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry i don't know whether you believe it or not there are many people who never believe it so you will sit down with circles of disfavor whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of god by the grace of god everything we do in this ministry prospers is a grace have you tapped into it is it working for you listen as a faithful person in this ministry you should be a reflection an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here don't let people come from somewhere you see how people behave when they come from other places their hearts are open they are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back but many people just sit down koinonia koinonia and they enjoy and after the grace they stand up and walk away proximity to an anointing does not release it upon your life it takes honor honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people me and Ejimi were watching a man of God one time and I looked at this man of God I said Kai this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth an uncommon grace he's not so fluent he's not even so intelligent you know that there are many business principles this guy does not know but there is there is an uncommon grace this guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks. One, one every week. On common grace. And we said, no, this guy knows what he's saying. I will not criticize such a man. I will listen with my heart open. I can ignore his imperfections and get what I need. Listen, anointings do not flow through perfect vessels. Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabara to say. I will reverence you. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. Honor is not human worship. Honor is not even giving somebody offering. It's just a communication. The honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open. There are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open. It doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Honestly, I don't. However, I honor them with my life. I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. You receive it. We have resented people little results in our lives but we're very quick to resent people you see a lady getting married and you look and say ah and she's not fine no Kai, the way god does his thing self that's what your eyes could see what you just said in the realm of the spirit is i dissociate myself from this experience that's what you have said 
every time you communicate this honor that's what you say lord i dissociate myself from this experience we are going to pray six laws i have given you you will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket you will you will tame life like a chess you know how people play chess life is not magic it's not chance as haphazard as it is there is a synergy there is a rhythm to life i pray in the name of jesus christ that you see everything i've been saying it's one thing to hear what i'm saying but it's another thing to see it he says i will stand upon my watch i will set myself upon the tower right he said and i will see what the lord will say to me some of these things i share with you freely i got them from my own mistakes i got them through pain i got them through sacrifice but they are irrefutable laws bring any man for me walk these laws and what satan bow what gates open by themselves i don't care whether it's gates of finances i don't care whether it's gates of health i don't care whether it's gates of ministry gates of business there is nothing you are doing that has not been done before ask those who master this key if he's setting up a company you are not the first to do it if it's marriage you are not the first to do it if it's barrenness you are not the first to be barren the day your light comes that becomes your day of salvation something i have ignored i used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me there was a man of god that set me free just one revelation from him i could go and borrow money and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because i felt i had to be everything to everybody and one day one man of god delivered me his name is dr mike modok just one statement he said never do to people what only god can do to them ah that was it that was my deliverance i found out that i was becoming god to many people so i was taking god's responsibility in the lives of so many people and he was killing me and i said no rather than being god let me start leading men to god and it gave me freedom there are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious you give them twenty thousand, they go and destroy it you give them hundred thousand for a business they throw it and you keep doing that is running the finances of your home you are being god to them lead them to god teach them the principles give them access to responsibility rise up on your feet let's pray hallelujah we're just going to have three prayer points i'm going to give us the next five minutes i like you to blast in tongues we're going to pray the secrets of the kingdom like bishop oyedeko will say that has been responsible for producing stars in the kingdom life is not guesswork stop guessing koinonia stop guessing you can walk circumspectly by knowledge by knowledge by knowledge lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues pray in the spirit pray pray your ignorance away pray your doubts away Pray your way to the realm of uncommon exploit. Pray your way to the realm of enviable greatness. Pray your way. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. Spread the secrets of the kingdom. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. Only thou.
Thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. But Thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. But Thou, O oh Lord, but Thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory, you're the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and say, Father, I'm ready to trade this secret. You have shown me. Teach me how to use them to produce uncommon results. Lift your voice and pray. There is an unction that teaches men. I have taught you, but there is a voice that can teach you. Pray. Pray. You are rising. I'm telling you, you are rising. This truth will lift you up. Lord, I'm ready to apply the kingdom. I'm ready to apply the kingdom. Kaparato sota, rapakarito shele bakari adaba. We are going to sing one song, just one song. I like you to sing it with all your heart. It's a prophecy, because in the next one minute, I want to pray for you. There is a grace that activates this. I've taught you the principles, but there is a grace. Arise, shine, my light is come. Personalize it. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I arise, my light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Sing it as a prophecy. I will arise. Hey, hey, my light is come. In this year of multiplied grace and influence. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. Arise. I see the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Isaiah 60, please. One to three. We are going to sing this song one more time. As you sing it, listen. I want you to see yourself like someone coming out of a pit. See yourself coming out of financial pits. See yourself coming out of all kinds of things. Sing it with understanding. The Bible says, sing praises with understanding. Sing it and we'll read this scripture and I'll pray for you. I arise and shine. My light is come. Oh, hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. I arise and shine. Light is come, Papa Shatala Bakaya, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. One more time, I arise and shine. My light is come. I 
says shine for your light what i've been teaching you has come all you have been hearing the mysteries that produce champions in the kingdom has come it says and the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 for behold it says the darkness shall cover the earth cross darkness the people he said but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you verse 3 hold on listen I like you everywhere you see die put my this is a prophecy for you before I speak over your life are you ready read it convincingly as a prophetic word one to read gentleness shall come to my light and their kings to my rising one more time and gentiles shall come to my light and their kings listen i have seen this thing in the spirit i have seen men rise while i was seeking god for this year god told me it's a year of multiplied grace and influence it's not just a name brothers and sisters we're about to round up we're getting towards the end of the first half there are signals that I'm beginning to receive in my spirit that men are going to change states like day and night. Believe what I'm telling you. That's why I'm teaching you this. The Lord began to put it in my spirit. It's time for people to change. My own assignment is to teach you this and release the grace. God's assignment is to watch over his word and bring it to pass. Lift your hands as I speak over you. Please, I want you to believe. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. It said, For there shall be a performance. I pray for you. The gates of the next level of your destiny be opened now. The gates of the next level of your destiny be opened now. The gates of the next level of your destiny by prophecy be open now. I speak to you. Change levels now. 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 I speak to your finances money has a spirit I call you to men now I call you to men now I call forth resources in the name of Jesus hallelujah lift your hands I want to end struggle this life of hardship that many people are going through I pray for you the life of struggle and hardship he said they are taken for a prey and none said restore i command that life of hardship come to an end now 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 hallelujah hallelujah I want you to believe in the Lord. I want you to believe what I'm saying. I want to release favor on you. I don't know how to make you believe this thing. Let no man despise you, for out of you will come a treasure. Let no one despise you. Let no one despise you. For out of you will come a treasure. The Lord says, I should tell you, there is this treasure that is hidden in earthen vessels. That the excellency power may be of God and not of men. Come, hold my hands. 
there is a fragrance that is coming upon your life from today that will make you uncommon uncommon distinguished for you love the Lord with your whole heart you love the Lord with your whole heart Father in the name of Jesus everything that makes men despise I curse it I curse it Hallelujah. Wow. Acts chapter 3. Turn to your neighbor and say, Are you still here? I just want to charge us a bit. Welcome everybody, all those who came from far and near. Honor you. Glad to have you here. You will never be the same. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from birth, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John? Follow me closely about to go into the temple axed an arm and Peter fastened, fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us and this is the key verse verse 5 let's read together one to read and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something expecting to receive something when he said look on us they paid attention because they were expecting that they were going to receive something as i began to pray and say lord what would i share with your people the lord said the only thing i need from them is expectation 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 is a proof of faith expectation is a proof that you trust god hallelujah if you if you tell me you are hungry and I dip my hands in my pocket, automatically you begin to have a sign of expectation because you anticipate that I'm bringing out something. Is that true? And so you begin to position yourself to receive and say thank you. The only thing God is asking from you tonight is that you be expectant. Expect that sickness to leave your body. Expect that family captivity to come to an end expect the lord to visit you expect to step into new levels of the anointing expect that no matter what the challenge is the power of god can step into your life it does not take time it only takes the spirit of god for where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty where the spirit of the lord is not there is no liberty i want you to know that the spirit of god is in this place tonight and the only message the Lord asks me to communicate to you is that your heart be expectant. Expectant. Lord, I expect to be healed. I expect that you will wipe my tears. I expect that this situation in my life will change at once. I expect it. I expect it. Do you believe? Do you expect that God will do something in your life? God is already visiting people. You do not imagine the degree of spiritual preparation that goes in to all of our meetings. Talk less of the miracle service. So I want you to know that there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. Hallelujah. Right away we'll begin to pray and I'll just be moving in the anointing and God will minister to us. Please and please let your heart be expectant. That's the only message the Lord asked me to give us tonight. Expectation. Expectation. Expect that that which you wrote in your prayer request will be answered. Expect that that which you came down. See, don't look at the situation. Just be expectant. Be expectant. The greatest enemy to expectation is your past. Your history. Your track record of failure. Your track record of the seeming shortcomings of God. So every time you expect, you say, but I prayed before. But I fasted before. It says, forgetting the things that are behind. 
Forgetting what happened yesterday or what did not happen yesterday, I press. Everyone say, I press. I press. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Just for two to five minutes. That's the only message the Lord asked me to bring to us tonight. Expectation. Let there be a, a depth of expectation in your heart. Lift your voice and cry to God. And say, Lord, I am expectant. Pray. Lord, as your power moves and as your spirit is touching men, I am expectant. I came with a hunger. I came for a touch. I came for an encounter. I came with an expectation. Hallelujah. 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 Before we pray, come, Pastor Femi. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's opening you up to a season of wisdom. 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 He's opening you up to strange wisdom. Wisdom. That's what you are receiving. Wisdom. Strong wisdom. He's opening you up to a season of wisdom. That's what you need for the next level of your life. Wisdom. Tremendous wisdom. The wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom of the spirit. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. Lord, I pray that you activate fountains of wisdom in him. Strange order of wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wisdom in your decisions. Dimensions of wisdom that you have never seen before. You will make decisions that will accelerate your life. Accelerate ministry. Hallelujah. In one minute, mention everything you came with as a challenge. And say, Lord, the time has come for your grace and your power. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place, Shalom, Shalom, my father, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, shalom. Shalom, shalom, Jehovah, shalom, 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 shal
Shalom. So welcome in this place. One more time. Shalom, yeah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. We are starting tonight with individuals that God is giving them breakthroughs. Every single one of those individuals will come under the anointing of the Spirit. At the count of three. Just those individuals. One, two, three. Now, now, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it now. That breaker anointing. I release it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. All the ones separated for breakthroughs right now. Inside and outside. I release that breakthrough anointing. That breakthrough anointing. Right now, that breakthrough anointing. Right now, shake it, take it, take it, take it. It comes like a mighty rushing wind. The breakthrough anointing, the breakthrough unction. Enough of that level, enough of that dimension. I speak it, I declare it, I prophesy it, and I release it. Take it. From your belly, out of your belly, let it gush like living waters. Out of your belly, that breaker anointing in the name of Jesus. Out of your belly, shake 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 that breaker anointing, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. I end the struggle. I end the struggle. I end the struggle by the breakthrough anointing. I end the struggle right now. I end the struggle right now. All over the building. I end the struggle right now. Shaka ba 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 ba. Shaka ta ba 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 ba. Shakatekate and Prota Sekete, Eleketebo Sotoba, Paratari Ketebo Sekete, Seketekate, Leketebos, and Proskata, Lakati de Bosha, Seketele Kotosia. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Everyone lay your hands on your stomach. Just lay your hands on your stomach. Hallelujah! Lay your hands on your stomach. He said, for out of your belly, something will happen to some people right now. Out of your belly, just keep your hands there. Father, in the name of Jesus, where are the ones you are separating? Spiritual breakthroughs. Right now. Right now. And right now, from your belly. From your belly. From your belly. From your belly. In the name of Jesus out of your belly let it flow let it flow living waters living waters living waters new dimensions living waters skatata kapata rekete tekete bekata taboskata embrata kata shekete lekes from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being, from your innermost being, a busting thought of new wine, a busting thought of new wine, a busting thought of new wine, a busting thought. Hallelujah. 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 
Sabarada balada bakadia. There are people here right now. Listen. You came here because you are confused. There is no direction. You are trusting God for direction. You have prayed but there is nothing to do. You need direction desperately. Lift your hands. Lord, I pray wherever they are right now, by the light of the Spirit, my Father locates them. Receive direction right now. Receive direction right now. Marital direction. Academic direction. Receive direction. Receive direction. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. By the light of God. By the illumination of the spirit. Direction. You will hear that voice. You will hear that voice. You will hear that voice saying this is the way. You will hear that voice saying this is the strategy. You will hear that voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord wants to destroy marital delay. This is what is happening right now. Marital, just keep your hands. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Hallelujah. Now hear me. There are people here who God wants to release them into their marital destiny. But there are horns and powers that has kept them down. You may think it's finances or you may think it's this and that. But the enemy has done this. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. I release you right now. I release you. I release your family. I release your sisters. That power that has held your marital destiny. Hear the voice of the Lord. That power that has stopped marriage in your family. I speak in the name of Jesus. Be loose right now. 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 Hallelujah. Now, lift your hands. I'm seeing in the spirit a tree without fruit. And so I know the Lord wants me to destroy barrenness. 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 There is someone who came here with that situation. I don't know if it's a couple or somebody. You are expecting a miracle desperately. Let me have that one person come out. I'm going to pray for everybody right now, but we need to break that yoke right now. We need to break that yoke right now. There are families tied down. There are families tied down. When you identify that person, the person can come out. Lift your hands. Let me pray. No, the Lord wants the family to come out first. Come out first. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Where's your wife? She left my house October 26th. We don't have the courier and she packed her things and she left. We married for eight years, no child. You've been married for eight years no child. with no child. And so because of the frustration, she left. Do you know where she is? She's in Kaduna in her mother's house. Why did she leave? Look at how the devil steps in to destroy families. Eight years and is living because there is no child. But are you still in touch? Well, 
the church tried to call her, she didn't answer, so I left her alone. I was just praying that God should just intervene. So a friend of mine invited me from Kaduna to come to this program. Where is the friend? Friend, come. She's I need to pray for you. May God bless you. Let's celebrate the friend. Hallelujah. These are the kind of useful and relevant friends that God should bring in your life. Friend, where are you? May God bless you. You are a good friend for inviting him to come and receive breakthrough. Ogasa. Do you believe your wife will come back? Yes, sir. You want her back? Yes. Sir. I'm going to pray for you. Your wife will return back. Amen. Forget about what has happened. God will give you two boys, two girls. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you, sir. You are a good man and you love God. Not only that, what do you do? I work in an electronics company, Samsung. So when we add this issue of this marriage, they have to let go of me, but I have my own personal business in Kaduna, which I, know. I God established. Is helping you. Yes, this marriage has destroyed too many things in your life. You've lost money. You've lost a lot of people. Even cars. Yes. Because I'm seeing somebody that really used to be blessed. What is like? Things are going down. The Lord is going to restore you. Do you believe that? You believe that? Yes, sir. Therefore, what God has joined. The Bible says, let no man put asunder. You need to be delivered. Right? There is a spirit that is making these things happen. You are a good man. You will be delivered right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shabaka brothers of I release your destiny right now. In the name of Jesus. I call forth your wife into your life. And I open the fountains of fruitfulness the Lord showed me two boys two girls and I release them to your life this power that has tied you down and tied your family in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that it is released right now in the name of Jesus I'm holding your hands and with these hands may your business jack up beyond that which you have ever known and I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will restore your fortune and he will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Friend, come. Where are you from? Kaduna too? Ka Zaria. Yeah. Zaria, yeah. You came alone? Yes. No, I came with a friend. What would you want the Lord to do in your life? Marital breakthrough. Marital breakthrough? Yes. What does that mean? Marriage or health yes. in your marriage? Marriage. 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 When? This year. You believe it? Yes. Or you're just saying it? You have already spoken the word and it's happening. Let me pray for you. Father, you anointed us to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To appoint unto them. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that before this year runs out, your husband comes to you and may you be happily married. You will marry a godly man. May you marry a blessed man, one who will love you and fear the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. Now lift your hands and let me pray. I'm praying for barrenness. I don't care what represents barrenness in any area of your life. Lift your hands. Barrenness can mean unfruitfulness in any aspect. He says, Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army, but he was leprous. It was an area of barrenness. Barrenness is that aspect of your life that is not productive. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you right now. Lift your hands. Father, there are people who like a vine.
have refused to bear fruit in different areas others want to bear fruit but the enemy has stopped it i pray for you right now every power that is sitting on your fruitfulness Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, Where are those people who barrenness have held their lives? Where are those people? In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon you now. Let fire come upon you now. I destroy the hold of barrenness. Everywhere in this building, I break the chains of barrenness. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, can you lift your hands? Just this row. Just this row. Just keep your hands lifted. I see a wind blowing through this row. Barrenness be destroyed from the back to the front back to the front back to the front there is no hiding back to the front there are many people in this room i break it right now i break it right now right now to the back from the back to the front 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 in the name of jesus christ anyone under any influence of unfruitfulness shake it, 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 it. Right to the back in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to minister deliverance to the oppressed. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. When the spiritual limitation is taken away, then your life will move forward. What will happen tonight is not just for you, but for every family you represent. So there are people who will come under the influence of the anointing to be delivered. Not just for themselves, but for their families and the families you represent. Lift your hands. Father, in the name that is above all names, I'm praying. There are spirits sitting on families and the destinies of people. Appearing to people in dreams and visions and corrupting your purposes for their lives. And Lord, it's time for them to go because this is Mount Zion. Now therefore I speak to every foul spirit every devil of darkness every yoke every territorial power that sits across territories I speak in the name of Jesus by the authority of the Lord Jesus and I come under an apostolic anointing I bring every spirit under arrest and I command that you will live at the count of three. Now at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. And they must leave you. One, two, three. Second, t -t 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 spirit husband. Every territorial power. Ancestral spirits that tie people and families. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out of God's people. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. I cause those powers. I cause those powers. I cause those powers. I cause those powers. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see spirits that come to people in night visions and dreams. Make intercourse with them and destroy their lives. Keep those hands lifted. Lord, where are those people? Let the sword of judgment 
Find them now. Let the sword of judgment find them now. Let the sword of judgment Sisters, lift your hands. A spirit will prefer to oppress a sister than a brother because with one sister, there are many people that can become victims. Not because of immorality or anything. It's just the nature, the compelling character of women. I pray right now, anyone here, whether you know it or not, that is under the influence of any spirit that is not of God. I pray and stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon that spirit. Let fire come upon that spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me that there are people here that start things but never finish. There are families that start things. You've been building a house for 10 years and will never complete it. Lift your hands. The finisher's anointing is going to come upon a few people right now. That grace to start and finish at the count of three is coming upon you for your destiny. Coming upon you for your family. Receive it right now. One, two, three. The finisher's anointing breaking the course of delay. The finisher's anointing breaking the yoke of delay. Projects that have refused to finish. Projects that have refused to finish. Hallelujah. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Now, for all those who came with sick people, you can march to the front now for prayer. Inside and outside. It's time to pray for the sick. Instrumentalists give us very anointed tunes. Worship team, help us. While that is happening, if you've not written your prayer request, do that quickly. And in case you think you need to add something to it, please don't stop playing. While you are seated here, the power of God is visiting you. So be in the spirit, inside and outside, no matter how far you are, connect in the spirit. You can call your loved ones to quickly send in their requests. There is a God that answers prayer. Please make way for those who are coming out. Shh. 
Jesus is the healer. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. of you who have come out I want you to wave goodbye to your infirmities and mean business with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe that Jesus still heals and he will heal you right now. Hallelujah. We'll be very fast about it. Just give her a chair. Hallelujah. All of you standing here, believe that Jesus will heal you right now. He will give us a sign. And the sign will be from one of you. Something will happen to one of you right now. And that will give us the sign of the stirring of the waters. power of God will come strongly upon one of you right now. When that happens, then it will allow us to pray for the sick. Right now. In abundance. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let there be miracles. I see miracles everywhere. Be discerning, be spiritual. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now, this right now. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now, right now.
I see miracles, everywhere. signs and wonders. Jesus, he will work well now. And that witchcraft attack will leave. Ask him if he believes. And tell him to go. What's this? The medical report. Okay. Father, this is why you anointed us. Every power that is not of God, I set you free from it right now. Of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you will walk normally by yourself. I release upon you the power that comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. For those of you who have never seen a miracle, watch closely what happens now. Oh, hallelujah! I feel the healing anointing coming upon you. Stomach bloated, Jesus sets you free. I come in the name of the Lord. Tell Him to hold my hands. Tell him to hold my hands. Release him. Release him. Walk. Come. Come. Tell him to come. Surprise! 
What just happened to him? Now? Yes, 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 sir. yes. Let me tell you something. It's not only settled. I pray for you yes, that not only this will happen, but God will use you to do this. Amen. Same thing. Receive that anointing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Baba, tell him from today. No witchcraft power. No chance. Will paralyze and keep him again. Appreciate God. Go back to your seat. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh. This looks like a medical thing. What's this for? It's supposed to help me stretch my fingers. 
is to help you stretch your fingers. They can't, they are not working. For eight months. Your hand. Yes. For how long? Eight months. Why? It just uh, after I started playing the guitar. You started playing the guitar. And playing then guitar. Long. Yes, sir. See strips, things. He has been playing guitar for as long. His fingers are as fresh as that of a baby. This thing is not because of guitar. This is witchcraft. The devil does not want you to play unto the glory of God. If you want to play for a club now, this hand will be healed. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. That's how he keeps robbing the church of potential people who worship God. Praise the Lord. You believe Jesus will heal you? Hold this. Look at me. I'm going to pray for you and the power of God will come upon you. You believe that? And then you move your whole hand and begin to try it. Say after me, Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the son of the living God. You're the son of the living God. Right now. Right now. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Say it again. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Look at what is happening to his hands. You cannot move them. Go ahead and begin to move it. Go ahead. Begin to move it. Move it by yourself. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Start moving your fingers. Look at this. He couldn't move his fingers. Look at this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what I'm doing. Hold it like this. Go ahead. Keep moving. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Couldn't use this at all. Couldn't even move. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that these hands become perfected. Can you see how the hands are? I mean, so stunned. You cannot even use it. Keep doing it. Keep shaking it. The power has gone and your hand recovers completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Give Jesus praise.
If we run to Him, He will run to us. If we lift our hands, He will lift us up. In a Oh, you say oh, of God. Now we say it again. If we call to Him, He will run to us. If we run to Him, He will run to us. He will lift our hands. He will lift our hands. Come now, pray. Oh, you say so, God. Hey, oh, see. To him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our head, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name. Oh, you say it's of God. One time. If we call to him, he will run to us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our head, he will lift us up. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. Hell from there, day by day. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. What the Lord has done, He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us victory. That's why we say, Oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. I say yeah, yeah. I say yeah. No baba. I say yeah. I say yeah, yeah. I say yeah. No. Oh, say yeah. I say yeah. No. I say yeah. I say yeah. I say yeah. Higher, 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 oh, oh. Lift 
Jesus higher. Higher, higher. Lift, lift, lift Jesus higher. Miracle walking God. Lift Jesus higher, 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 higher. Oh. Lift Jesus higher. Jesus higher higher higher, higher. Oh. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, if, if you are here to submit your prayer request, we are going to give God a hot, hot praise as we pray on this. Five minutes of hot praise. Dance out every nonsense out of your life. This name was Worship team, are you ready? This name I like that guy. That's ah, no, no. This name is Tima. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Steve. This name is Tima. The bank is in a big mass. Hey! Come on, hey! Shout a praise! Hey! 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 Give the Lord a dance and a shout. And my bummy rubber, bum, 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 go, Jare.
Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands here and begin to just pray in the spirit. Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come, O God. We have come before the mighty one. I'd like you to pray. There is nothing that our God cannot do. There is nothing he cannot do. says unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come father this request represent the cries of your people this request represent the desires of your people this request represent the challenges of your people this request represents the obstacles that are standing on our path to destiny these requests threaten the advancement of your kingdom in our lives we pray in the name that is above all names that every request here be turned into a testimony in the name of the lord jesus christ no matter how impossible the situation is oh god i pray that one by one, one by one, they will come and testify of your goodness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Already for some, I heard that Victor's wife that we prayed for has been rushed to the hospital. Labor has started for her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a very prophetic moment. Please, everybody inside and outside, don't let anyone distract you now. Lift your hands as we speak. Hallelujah. 
I love this part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to be blessed. The power of prophecy and its ability to enter your life and change things. Please, I want you to believe. Please, I want you to believe. No matter how far you are inside and outside, I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Everything that represents limitation in your life. Everything that has stood as a limitation against your life and your destiny. I come in the name of the Lord God. The Lord God Almighty. And I declare that in this month of May, may that limitation be lifted up your life. May that limitation be lifted up your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Whatever has stopped the helpers of your destiny from locating where you are, whatever wrong advice, whatever wrong impression has been given to them about you and your family that has made them refuse to come to your aid. Makata katakata, seketeketebaka, emproto seketelekata, mankratos katabalatapa, rebeketeketeketebeledebos. I call them into your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. hallelujah I pray for you this is the season where wisdom will be required for you to move to the next level listen the Bible says through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established through knowledge are the rooms filled with every treasurable thing wisdom for many of us is the key to the next level and this is not human wisdom it's not wisdom by scientific calculation. Strategies that are revealed of the spirit. Strategies that can take you in one day to realms that years have not brought you. I pray the wisdom of the spirit may it come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. The wisdom for the next dimension. The wisdom for the next dimension. The wisdom for the next dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the keys to a life of stagnation is confusion. Lack of direction. There's nothing as terrible as a man who is clueless about what to do. It can be frustrating when you are clueless. You are at the middle of an ocean and you don't know what to do but there is the spirit of counsel and mind the, the dimension of the operation of the spirit that comes and speaks peace to you in the name that is above all names I pray for you that every decision you need to make every direction that you need to take for this second half of your life to truly be the year of the rain I release upon you that dimension of the spirit of counsel and might marital direction financial direction academic direction career direction no more confusion no more confusion no more confusion hallelujah I pray for you part of the keys to stepping into the blessings of the Lord 
is the ability for your eyes to see opportunities. Hagar, listen, Hagar was in a place. It was a desert, but there was water. Her eyes could not see. But when the angel of the Lord appeared unto her, suddenly she saw water. I pray you have been passing water and bless you. And you have not been seeing it in this month of May. The anointing that opens the eyes of men to opportunities that can bless you. I release it upon you now. I release it upon you now. Where men see obstacles, may you see opportunities. Where men see stumbling blocks, may you see stepping stones. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear has kept many people from moving forward. Fear of everything. Fear of death fear of failure fear of taking action fear of moving even when god says move you say i'm afraid start that business i'm afraid take a step to marry i'm afraid do this i'm afraid move on further i'm afraid i pray for you in the name of jesus every manifestation of fear every manifestation of fear that has kept your ego on the line that will not allow you soil your hand in destiny to make progress that keeps you from being afraid every manifestation of fear that gives you a feeling of being embarrassed to take a step i cause that fear now i cause that fear now i cause that fear now when they got to the red sea they were afraid and when moses went before the lord he said tell the people to move forward the signs don't go before you they follow you you will have to take a step as a sign that you trust god take the step and die taking it let it be that it was god that killed you there is no man that took a step in the name of the lord that did not return with a testimony for some may trust in horses others may trust in chariots but for us we trust in the name of the lord and everything we do in the name of the lord he said whatsoever you do in word and in deed do it in the name of the lord i pray for you again fear has stopped millionaire businesses from starting up fear has stopped people from applying in places high places they think they are not qualified fear has stopped many of us fear has stopped you from starting the building project who said you are too young so long as god gives you the signal there are some of us all of us are adults in our house but our parents cannot boast of even a simple bungalow because of fear you have ten thousand go and buy a trip of sand and pour it on the ground and leave it here tell the devil i'm coming look let me tell you you will never break through in life Till you take the attitude of if I perish, I perish. I pray the boldness, the audacity, the strength, the audacity to ride through without exhaustion, to ride through without fear. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. I pray for your academics. Shekete palabata. The ten times better anointing. Ma dekete kete tete keta. Shekete lepa. The distinguishing anointing. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. Listen. Anyone here. Or any family here that the devil is eyeing for death that is saying you will not see the next month or the end of this year I declare by the mystery of the blood the last card the hallmark of God's victory 
I judge the manifestation of death over your life. I judge the manifestation of death over your family. You will travel out and come back safe. No armed robber will get you on the road. No terrorist will attack you on the road. When others say there is a casting down, it will never be your testimony. For you, it will be that there is a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, I pray over your finances. The grace to pay the price now and to pay the price early for a glorious financial future, I release it. Every spirit of laziness, every spirit of carelessness, every spirit of lukewarmness, every inertia, every reluctance to begin to take appropriate financial decisions, especially for the brothers, I cause it to his root now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those trusting God for a miracle job. I tell you the truth when the hand of the Lord upon you is upon you there will be a door that is open some of you are standing in for yourself and some for your loved ones I pray in the name that is above all names may God give them supernatural jobs jobs that they will be proud of in the name of Jesus and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren it's one thing to be rich is one thing to be blessed but it's another thing to be honored honor is not something that money can buy i pray for you that mantle of honor that makes you distinguished and rewarded everywhere you go i release it upon you right now your superiors will honor you your contemporaries will honor you your subordinates will honor you even your enemies will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for everything that has died or is dying here I don't care what it is projects that have died ideas that have died dreams that have died I speak to you in the name of Jesus come back to life come back to life visions that have died assignments that have died passions that have died strengths that have died I call it back to life in the name of Jesus every voice you have heard that has killed your dreams every voice you have heard that has killed your potentials the voice of your past the voice of your failure the voice of mediocre the voice of limitation I silence those voices from your life I silence those voices from your life. I pray for every ministry represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every business represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every job represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every family represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every destiny represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. The Bible says, Thou anointest my head with oil and it makes my cup to run over. There is an anointing that comes upon your head that translates into increase in your life. Thou anointed my head with oil and that oil makes my cup, my source of supply to run over. I pray for you. The anointing that will give you wisdom. The anointing that will give you creativity. The anointing that will give you ideas, insight, concepts, strategies for wealth. I release it upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Every habit, every issue, every challenge, every weight on your life that is eating up your Christian integrity, that is eating up your walk with God. You love God, but there are weights in your life that keep drawing you back to the way of sin. I pray for you. The hand of the Lord lifts you out of that nonsense. The grace of God picks you out of that limitation. 
grace to say no to every appearance of evil grace to say no to everything that is ungodly in the name of Jesus Christ I pray a special prayer for our brothers I curse in your life the spirit of irresponsibility one more time I curse from your life and your vicinity every spirit that refuses you from rising as a man that you are that entitlement mentality that makes you think someone else is responsible for your success I curse that mindset in the name of Jesus from today I release upon you grace grace to rise and take up the challenge of manhood in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you you will not need to defend yourself the Lord God Almighty will be your defense the Lord will anoint you in such a way that even your enemies will walk towards your progress in the name of Jesus I prophesy restoration for everything you have lost restoration 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 in the name of the Lord Jesus and I pray for you a new dimension in the spirit a new level of prayer grace a new level of word grace a new dimension of encounters with the spirit of God where you are becoming lukewarm where you are losing the initial standard of your Christian experience where you are already bending bending against the things that would make you powerful I pray for a restoration for you where you have lost the voice of the spirit I command that you be to hear his voice again where you have lost zeal for the house of God I command a restoration for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I pray for you all through the remaining part of May into June let it be a month of testimonies for you beginning from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ all those who have been looking for you to bless you may this be the season they find you all those who have received instructions from God to hold your hands and lift you up with no strings attached but have not been able to find you I pray listen listen Samuel had already been ordained I mean Saul ordained to be a king but he needed to find Samuel and they kept searching and he could not find Samuel until by the wisdom of God they were able to find him you can be one anointing away from the next level of your life you can be one prophetic impartation away you can be one destiny helper away I pray again for you whoever has been looking for you like the lost ass of Samson of, of Saul whoever has been looking for you to bless you and has not found you may this be the season they find you in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you nothing will rob your joy this month this will be the month of June will be for you a month of joy and laughter in the name of Jesus Christ before miracle service next month most of all your prayer requests would have been turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting hallelujah now keep standing everybody you're here and you need to return back to Jesus Christ keep standing everyone you've heard the word of the Lord and you know that you need to make it right with Jesus maybe this is the first time you are running to Jesus genuinely to commit your life to him or you've once given your life to Jesus and you've seen that you are derailing and you need to make it right tonight we will not end this meeting without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life or rededicate your life wherever you are make your way to the front right now we have one minute for this God bless you God bless you as you come God bless you as you come
don't wait for anybody to be the first to come make your way god bless you god bless you they are coming inside and outside celebrate them koinonia god bless you as you come jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to the father but by me god bless you as you come don't be ashamed he will give you a new beginning and he will supply grace that you will go higher and higher higher and higher keep coming young and old keep coming run to jesus keep coming in the name of the lord jesus don't sit back hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much for coming to make a decision for jesus just raise your right hand and repeat after me consciously and from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem this is this is a confession that brings salvation unto you say after me lord jesus i believe in you i declare from today that you are my savior and you are my lord I receive of your life I receive of your spirit and I declare that from today my sins are washed away I am a brand new person the hand of God is upon me I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus Christ everything that is not of God I take authority over it I receive grace from God to live a victorious Christian life in Jesus name Amen Amen and Amen I want to congratulate you for making this decision it's the best decision you can make this decides your eternal destiny Hallelujah now I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they will have your details they will welcome you more warmly and then will communicate to you through them God bless you this way draw that baby baby this way no, 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 no. You have done, and the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of my praise. We magnify. Hallelujah. You. All those who are worshipping with us for the first time, if this is your first time being here worshipping with us at Koinonia, please make your way to the front. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Celebrate them as they come. God bless you. Bless you, bless you. Come on, Koinonia, you can... Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.